get old enough to understand, you ask them that. Where are you going to? Where are you headed? They get up to those teenage years, and like Michaela, who's 16 now, and I bet you her mom and dad, if they let her drive, I'll bet you that before she leaves the house, they're going to ask her, where are you headed? Where are you going? When are you going to get home? Are there any boys involved with this? And the guy has details. Where are you going? Where are you headed? Whenever someone graduates from high school, the first thing we ask is, where are you headed? Are you going to college? Are you going to trade school? Are you going into the workforce? What are you doing? Where are you headed? That's a natural question. Whenever we get to be adults, there's, there's many things, times that we ask that same question. Every aspect of life, in our career, where is your career headed? Some of you today can say, well, my career is going down the tubes. My career is a dead-end dead job. My career is a great, great, great job, and I love it. Where are you headed to? Everybody's headed somewhere. Maybe it's in your marriage. Where's your marriage headed to? That's a fair question. I have people come to me for marriage counseling, and the first thing I have to decide or have to unravel is where is this marriage headed? What's going on? Is there problems? Is there things from the past? Is there things going on right now? Is there finance involved? And you want to get personal with somebody, you say, where's your finances headed? That's a personal thing to people. Some of you today, you say, my finances are struggling. That's, that's through all the picture of America right now. Our financial aspect is struggling. But folks, I want to give you some big picture here. This is a side note. You look at other countries, and financially, we're still the most wealthy country in the world. Yep. We still have more luxuries. We, we take things for granted. Where are you headed with your finances? Where are you headed with your goals? What do you have a goal in life? Where are you headed? So we ask all these questions. You know what <laughs> that question does? That, that question makes people do two things. Number one, it makes someone think. It makes someone think, and it requires them to give you some kind of a response. Now, they can ignore you. They can say, I don't care. They can say, this is it, and have it all laid out, whatever it may be. But it requires them to think and to give some kind of a response. That's a fair question. But you see, folks, there's something much more important in our lives, in people's lives, than their finances, and their marriage, and, and their families, and their homes, and their job, and all that. How can that be? Because the Word of God says so. Mm -hmm. You see, the Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So it's important and a fair question for us to ask anyone. Ask ourselves, ask our family, ask our friends, ask your neighbor, ask someone that you don't even like. Where are you headed? You see, the spiritual implications are such that we cannot afford not to be asking that question. We see people walking by us all the time. We make acquaintances with people. We have people in our families. We have friends. There's people in this church. The bottom line, we just need to ask them, where, where are you going? Where are you headed? Not in your marriage, not in your finance, not in your in, in whatever it may be. Where are you headed spiritually? Because that's the most important question. You see, everyone is headed somewhere. It says the way to, or all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So that tells us everyone is headed somewhere because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now let's set the stage for the next verse that I want to give you, Romans 6.23. Romans 6.23, I'll give you just a second to get there. It's not very far away. Romans 6.23 says this, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our, our Lord. So the first thought, where are you headed? That's, that's what everybody needs to be asking. Because all have sin and fall short of the glory of God. But it says, the wages of sin is death, the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Folks, do you know what that does? That gives us two very distinctive, different paths. But that's a dividing line. That's a, a medium between one road and the other. Because in the end, do you know when it comes to spiritual life, there's only two roads? 
You know, the Romans were very sophisticated. The Romans had roads that, that ran everywhere. They had hundreds and hundreds of miles. And in the end, they all came right back to Rome. That's where we get the expression, all roads lead to Rome. Today, we say all roads lead to Nebo. Amen. Phew. I love Nebo. I, I'm, a, I'm a former Nebonian at one time. Went to school at Nebo. Got some people here from that. That's good. I got family there. But they went under the aspect that all roads lead to Rome, and, and spiritually, we can liken that to the world. Because here's what the world wants to tell you. You know, all roads end up leading to heaven. You just have to believe something. Whatever religion it may be, whatever we want to believe, if you believe you're a good enough person, if you think you can do good deeds, things like that, you just try to be right with the world. And eventually that will lead you to heaven. You see, folks, the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. Now, I don't know if that makes any sense to you at all, but there's two roads. The first road is human achievement. Human achievement. You see, human, human achievement says this. If I obey all the rules, I'm going to be okay. If I do the right things and enough good things, then everything's going to be okay. It's kind of like driving down the highway on the road. Do you always do the right thing on the road? How many of you ever speed in your life? <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> We've all done that. I heard it said here a while back, you know, the speed limit is not anything more than just a good suggestion. Amen. How many of you ever try to go downtown and you're just aggravated and you just don't even put your seatbelt on? We all do that at times. Well, some do. It's kind of like my little rebellion. You know what? I'm just going down to the post office and I get so sick and tired of everybody telling me what to do. I'm just not going to wear my seatbelt. Billy taught me that. He never wears his seatbelt. But when we get caught, we're upset because the officer, what's he going to do? He's going to give us a ticket. Now, I like Illinois State Police as much as anybody. I'm saying that in case this recording ever goes out. <laughs> But the bottom line is, don't you get aggravated when they're sitting downtown here waiting to try to find you not wearing your seatbelt? And we get so mad at them for doing their job. That's their job. Now, some of them do it, and they enjoy doing it a little too much. <laughs> and others of them do that, and they say, you know what? You, were, you ran that stop sign, but I'm just going to give you a seatbelt ticket. Keep a little break. I've had a seatbelt ticket before myself. And I get aggravated at the cop. I say, couldn't you? I didn't tell him this, but I thought, couldn't you just cut me a break? I'm a man of God. <laughs> <laughs> but the bottom line, I broke the law. I knew it was wrong, and I broke the law. Now, here's another step. There's been times I've broken the law and not even known it. When I didn't see a certain road sign or I didn't see something, a mark or something, and I broke the law and I didn't know it. You know what happens if a cop sees that and stops me and gives me a ticket? I still deserve it. Because if I said, I didn't know that was the speed limit here, I didn't see the sign, you know what, that, that doesn't stand up in his mind. You see, the bottom line is, we break God's law. Mm -hmm. God gave us the law and... The, the Jews thought, you know what? If we could just become righteous in our own, own life, if we can do enough good deeds, if we can hold on to the law, we can get to heaven. See, folks, the law was not given to us to get us to heaven. The law was given to us to show us we can never get to heaven on our own. Bottom line. The Bible even says if you've broken one law, you've broken them all. So in other words, the wages of sin is death. I earned that speeding ticket. I earned that seatbelt ticket. I have nobody to blame but myself. And my wife tells me this. She says, if I ever get a seatbelt or a speeding ticket, just know I deserved a hundred others and I just got caught once. It doesn't matter. Because in the end, we've broken God's law. We say, that's not fair. That's not right. Hey, we have to live by the rules. It's God's rules. This is His world. And He set it up for us. We broke.
wrote God's law. We, human achievement tells us, I can do this and I'll be on the right road. Folks, here, here's, here's another thought. There are only two types of religion in the world. Two types of religion. Now think about this for a minute. There are only two roads. There's only two religions. Number one, any religion in this world, whether it be Muslim, whether it be Hinduism, whether it be whatever it may be, Confucianism, whatever you want to throw out there, every one of those, if you look at the core of what they say, they say that man in and of himself can achieve a higher level and somehow get to heaven. That's what they say. All those can be lumped into one road, and all those roads do not lead to heaven. All those roads lead you straight to hell. That's right. You see, there's only one road. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. He's the only road to heaven. There's two distinctly different roads. Human achievement, the other one is divine accomplishment. Divine accomplishment tells me in the Bible that while I was still a sinner, Christ died for me. While I was lost, while I had no hope, while I had no chance, Jesus came and died for me. That's a divine accomplishment. God, only God can do that. You see, there's an adjective, a, a, a conjunction here. I've got to get this right, even though my wife's not here. There's a conjunction in this sentence that says this. It says, for the wages of sin is get death. You've earned that because you, you've sinned against God, but... The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Amen. Do you know that's that's a that's a big but right there? <laughs> the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So what that tells me is those are two highways. If you want to try to earn it on your own, you go down that highway. It's going to lead you to hell. But the gift of God, a completely different highway, His name is Jesus, is eternal life. You know, Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. I want to read that for you. It's very good. Jesus says this. These are the two roads right here. Matthew 7, 13. Jesus says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go by it. Verse 14. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Folks, there's two different roads. You see, Matthew 7, 13 says there's a wide way. Matthew chapter, or verse 13, 14 says there's a narrow way. It says there's an easy way, there's a difficult way, there's a crowded way, there's a few that find it. There's destruction and there's life. Folks, being on the highway to hell is an easy path to take. You don't have to climb onto it, you're on it because you broke the law. But the other side of the highway is narrow. It's difficult. There's few who find it. But in the end, there's life. Amen. Now go to Romans 5.8. Romans 5.8. we got to backtrack, but this is, this is the way it fits into context. Romans 5.8. It says, But God demonstrated His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I think I just said that. Because that flows, that fits. God demonstrated His love towards us in the while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now listen to this. The cost of God's pathway is priceless. The cost of God's highway, His roadway to heaven, is priceless. And Christians, here's where we need to be slapped around a little bit because we forget that sometimes. We forget how awesome God's grace is. We forget how awesome God's mercy is. We forget that God has placed us on that highway and He paid for it by the, through His Son by the blood of Jesus. It's not made of asphalt. It's made of His blood, His body that was given for you and I. And for those of you who choose to go the other direction, Jesus died on the cross. There's no, no debating that. Jesus died for you. There's no question about that.